Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel and over the last week I've been driving this, the 2021 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Now the Sequoia has been with us for well over 10 years at this point, but the TRD Pro is a relatively new model being introduced originally in 2020. Now in order to condense things kind of neatly, I'm going to walk you through exactly what I like about this SUV and what I don't like. And after that, I'm going to take it on the road and I'm going to show you what it's like to drive. But before we do any of that, I want to make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel because it helps us out a ton. Let's check it out. So I figured we could start with the positives because this TRD Pro model is very good looking. Now, before we dive in, we should talk about the sort of aged elephant in the room because the Sequoia has been in the US market for well over a decade. In fact, it was introduced in 2007 for the 2008 model year. And from that time, it went all the way from 2008 to the 2017 model year without any major changes. However, in 2018, Toyota did give it a complete refresh, sort of modernize it a little bit. And that's the model we're looking at here. Now, this TRD Pro model was introduced in 2020. And so this is the second year we've had this TRD Pro variant. The first thing you're going to notice is that this Sequoia has a massive front grille exclusive to the trim level. Speaking of exclusive, you're going to have this color, which is called Lunar Rock, which is sort of like almost like Nardo gray with some green tones in it. It's actually very, very nice. It's one of my favorite ones. I think my favorite is still the army green color, but this is definitely second best in my book. Now, one thing that's also going to strike you about the TRD Pro model are these wheels. They're 18 inches in diameter, eight inches wide. They're BBS and they're forged aluminum wheels. Now in terms of tires, we have Michelin off-roading tires. They're 275, 65, 18s. It's a square setup. So they're exactly the same on all four corners. Now the benefit of these is that they're not overly noisy on the road or uncomfortable either. Now also you're gonna notice along the side we have these roof rails and this little step here. They both have a very thick coating on them so it's not like they're gonna get scuffed or scratched whether you're off-roading or on the road. These should look very very nice for a very long time as well. Now the next thing I like about the Sequoia TRD Pro actually lives under the hood with this 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8. Now in terms of total power we have 381 horsepower and 401 pounds feet of torque. Now keep in mind this vehicle has a curb weight of just over 5,700 pounds and for the most part that's a good amount of power to get the Sequoia up and moving without feeling sluggish in any way. And what I like about this engine specifically has to do with its long-term viability and robustness because the, one of the pluses of having the Sequoia be around for such a long time is that we can estimate how reliable it will be during your ownership. In some cases, these engines have been found to go well over a million miles without major repairs. But for the most part, you can expect at least 200,000 easy miles with this powertrain under the hood. So while you do pay a lot up front to get the biggest and baddest Sequoia, it will last you a very, very long time. Now, I mentioned there is a six-speed automatic transmission. This particular model has all-wheel drive as well. There's a little selector inside of the dashboard. You can pick between two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, and four-wheel drive low, depending on your situation. But for the most part, you're going to be running it with rear-wheel drive. So next thing I love about the 2021 Sequoia is just how much space there is in here. With all of the seats folded, you have a maximum cargo capacity of 120 cubic feet of space. So you do have to put up with a very big vehicle on a daily basis, but when you want space, there is a ton of it. Now, as standard, the sort of the cheapest and entry level into the Sequoia, you're gonna get seating for eight people. But however, in this scenario, in this configuration for the TRD Pro, this one only, only seats seven people. Every single seat inside of the Sequoia TRD Pro is incredibly comfortable, which is sort of another half positive point is that everything in here is very very comfortable now for my last major plus surrounding the sequoia trd pro i want to talk about standard equipment because despite this being a very old vehicle on the market toyota has done a good job of updating it throughout the years to keep it competitive and i'm talking specifically about safety because this sequoia comes standard with toyota sense and what that means you get your radar guided cruise control you get your lane departure warning uh, lane tracing and you also get the road sign detection which means if there's a stop sign the sequoia will read it and know and show you which i think is incredibly helpful now one of the pluses is that the sequoia is a very big vehicle so having those extra little safety features will not only keep you safe 
safe, but it will also keep pedestrians and other people safe because remember, this is a very big and very heavy vehicle. And I like that, that it comes as standard. Now, no model is perfect. So I think we should pivot to talk about the Sequoia's downsides, what its downsides are in my personal opinion, starting with gas mileage. Now, this particular model is rated for 13 MPG in the city and 17 MPG on the highway with a combined average of about 15 MPG. However, during my testing over the last week or so, I've been averaging closer to 14 MPG in total, not having a heavy foot, just normal everyday driving. And that's a major downside considering the sort of overall efficiency you can get from some other full-size newer competitors. But again, that's one of those downsides of having the older, more robust engine is lower fuel economy. Now, the next thing I don't like about the 2021 Sequoia has to be how much it costs. Because the standard, the base, the cheapest Sequoia you can buy starts at 50,000 bucks. But this one being a TRD Pro has a base price closer to $64,000. As tested, our exact vehicle comes in at $65,000, which I think is a lot, especially when you consider what some of its competitors are offering at similar price points. This one is definitely on the expensive side. So for the last drawback of the 2021 Sequoia, we need to turn towards its interior because this area is decidedly dated. Now, considering, again, this is a $65,000 vehicle and what some of its competitors are doing at a similar price, this one is definitely sort of lacking a little bit. And I'm talking about in the layout itself and also the materials, the overall plastics in here, nothing feels sort of uh, very high quality, uh, not only in the touch, but in the look visually it all looks like black plastic and it doesn't look very sharp now i must admit that you have a newer screen with apple carplay android auto connectivity which is great and as i mentioned earlier you have toyota sense which again that's great you have those tech improvements but the overall layout and interior quality I think it's not befitting of a 2021 $65,000 vehicle. So now that we're on the road with the 2021 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro, I can tell you about how it drives. And frankly, it is very cushy. It's very comfortable. And that's kind of, you're gonna notice that's gonna be the overarching theme about these driving impressions. Now, for the most part, we're on the highway. Unfortunately, we couldn't test this TRD Pro off-road. But seeing as you're most likely going to be using it on the road most of the time, I feel like these are the driving impressions that really matter. Now, we're currently on the highway doing about 65 miles an hour, and I feel that this is probably where the Sequoia feels the most at home. Now, in terms of handling at higher speeds, you're not getting a lot of bounciness despite being the off-roading trim. Uh, it's not super bouncy, it's very, very comfortable. And I think the that comfort comes as a result of the powertrain, the inputs, and the interior. But let's start with the powertrain. Just as a quick refresher, it's a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8, which produces 381 horsepower and 401 pounds feet of torque. Now all of that power goes uh, via a six speed automatic transmission to either the rear wheels or all wheels, depending on a little selector that I have in front of me. Uh, but for the most part, I've been running it in rear wheel drive and just sort of comfortably moving around the city as my daily driver. Now the first thing you're gonna notice about driving the Sequoia is how comfortable the suspension is. Everything is very, very soft here. It absorbs bumps extremely well and it's not bouncy by any means. Now, that doesn't mean that it is sort of sharp. Now, when you do take turns, there's a considerable amount of body roll, but remember, this is a body on frame SUV. It's tall, it's meant for off-roading. So that's kind of what you get. That's one of those uh, trade-offs for those off-roading skills. But on the road, at least, it remains very, very comfortable. Next, we need to talk about the powertrain inputs because your throttle response is very, very relaxed. You can put your foot down and it's not like the RPMs are gonna shoot up and you're gonna try to like, you know, sort of blast off. Now, 401 pounds feet of torque for a vehicle that weighs 5,700 pounds, I think it's properly matched. It doesn't feel slow by any means and it does have a little, it has a good amount of get up and go when you really want to speed up or overtake. But for the most part, it's very, very relaxed, uh, both throttle, brake inputs. We have 13.9 inch uh, rotors, which help this big B stop fairly well. Next, moving on to the steering inputs. They're very soft and very easy to do. Even though this is a very big vehicle, the fact that the steering is light, uh, it actually makes it nicely uh, maneuverable even in smaller spaces. I can talk about how old this vehicle is and that it was designed over a decade ago and blah, 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 but 
one of the pluses about that is that it doesn't have super modern steering. And as a result of that, I can feel what's going on on the road. Like right now I'm on the highway and I get all these little vibrations coming through the steering wheel, letting me know what's going on in the road surface uh, beneath me, which I think is great, uh, but it doesn't become uncomfortable or distracting uh, when driving. But it's surprisingly nice. That being said, however, when you want to go really, really fast and you want to put your foot down, that uh, six-speed automatic transmission isn't exactly the world's fastest shifting machine, uh, but the benefit of that is that it is very smooth in daily driving operations. So when you're sort of commuting around, you really don't notice it at all. But when you're trying to go up to speed, it isn't particularly smooth and it isn't particularly quick. But then again, it's also worth noting that that's not the main purpose of this vehicle, it's just something that I noticed. Adding to that sort of comfort atmosphere of this Sequoia is actually one thing that I found kind of interesting is that even though this one has more sort of off-roady tires being the TRD Pro, it doesn't it translate to a ton of noise inside the cabin. For the most part, this remains a very quiet, a very refined experience despite being an older vehicle. Uh, it still is, it, you get the sense that it's put together very, very well. And I think that's probably what will lend to having some good long-term comfort if you try to take this thing on like a road trip or something like that. The fact that you don't have all of this noise sort of intruding the cabin, uh, it, it means that you can drive this for much longer without getting tired. Now, as far as family road trip vehicles go, like the minivan has been sort of the undisputed king for decades for family road trips, but I think this vehicle would be really, really great at that. Uh, just given of how easy and it, how stable it cruises at higher speeds uh, without any drama, I feel like I could drive this across the country. Now, the most important highlight of the interior for me are the seats because now I've compared this also to its sort of pickup truck sibling, the Tundra, because they're very similar. They share the powertrain, they share the same uh, chassis and all that stuff. But one thing that I like is that they share the seats as well now this being the trd pro uh, you have nice embroidery in the seats there's red stitching which i think is nice as well now the benefit of these seats particularly is that they're massive and i mean not only in the sort of how how tall they are but also how wide and cushy they are and they are like a giant cushion you can really sort of lay into these seats and truly relax so there we have it the 2021 toyota sequoia trd pro and whether or not this is a good buy comes down to the fact of what you're exactly looking for out of a full-size SUV. If you want the latest tech and the flashiest toys, then maybe this Toyota might not be the one for you. However, if you want an incredibly durable and dependable SUV, then this Toyota fits the bill perfectly. Additionally, it's incredibly spacious, comfortable, and with its body on frame, off-roading uh, design, it's very, very capable as well. And as I've mentioned multiple times throughout this review, we cannot ignore the long-term durability from this V8 and this sort of powertrain in general. As a result, if you're looking to buy something to keep for let's say a decade plus and drive well into the 200,000 mile range, then maybe this Sequoia is the right buy for you. And with that, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. See you again really soon.